Hi there, and welcome to What's the Word in association with Ladbrokes. I'm joined this week by Shane Mann from Ladbrokes. Got Brian Sheeran in, in midfield and uh, Johnny Ward beside me as always. How are you guys? You're right? All good. Busy week? Yeah. Good. <coughs> Not really, no. <laughs> no. Last week was all right. Yeah. Galway. Recovering too. still. It took a full week. Went from Galway to a festival and uh, yeah, didn't really didn't know what had happened in the world for about a week. I was reading the paper <laughs> as if like, oh, but uh, back now anyway. Okay, dokie, back. Yeah, I think I sent you a text message on like Friday and I didn't get a response till Monday, so. Yeah, you were lucky to get a response. <laughs> yeah. Very, very. Uh, right, it's a big weekend. Looking forward to the Shergar Cup. Can we, can we call it a success at this stage? 13 years of Shergar Cup. We'll have over 30,000 people there. Go on. Wouldn't be for me now, to be Not honest. You, no, 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 I think it's phony racing, trying to be team sport type nonsense. Chance like, to see Jay Moreira. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. No, th like that, that you can get some exotic riders, but yeah, wouldn't wouldn't motivate me now. Get thirty thousand people in for a bang moderate car that they won't see a more than hundred rated horse all day. What are they there for? Rita Ora. <laughs> Why do people go racing in England on Saturdays? To cause fun. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, you said it, Shane. Yeah. No. What about you, Brian? You a big fan of the Sugar Cup? I don't know anyone who goes, oh, can't wait for the Sugar Cup. It's just one of those things that just kind of passes me by. I haven't even looked at the card. It's kind of moderate enough. Every race is a handicap as well, isn't it? Yeah. So it's Eight runners. Very open contest across the board. I'd Good for each way, lucky 31s yeah, and 63s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can understand when more sort of each way thieves are not sort of latching on to this. Your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, look, we're at the peak of the flat season at the moment. Some brilliant racing we actually had over the course of this week, sort of informative from uh, sort of looking forward to, to the rest of the year, particularly like, I don't know, Too Darn Hot and I uh, saw Centroid win last night. So you're going to give us a flat horse to follow for the rest of the year. Brian, we'll start with you because you're still flicking through now, so Johnny. Uh, Go on, Brian. Uh, this is... This is a bit of an obvious one, but Low Sun was pretty good winning the handicap hurdle there, the, the staying handicap hurdle at Galway. And I think there could be more to, to be had with him on the flat. He won a two-mile handicap there at the Curra, but uh, obviously Kelly O'Farrell gets a really good tune out of him over hurdles. But Willie Mullins has any amount of these proper dual-purpose horses. But I'd say there could be a nice staying handicap to be won with him. Something like a Cesaro, perhaps, or something like that? Yeah, I just don't, I, I don't think handicap. we've seen the best of him on the, on the level yet. Uh, so he's the one I'd be low sun for yeah, you yeah. Shane anything for you another fairly obvious one an even more so obvious one possibly but Saxon Warrior after his effort in the Carl Eclipse um, I think we're all fairly convinced now he doesn't get a mile and a half he's, down, he's entered into the, the Judmont he's also in the Irish Champion Stakes and the QE2 at Ascot um, very unlucky the last day in the Carl Eclipse I felt and he's currently 92 at Labricks for the Judmont which is only I think 10 or 11 days away so if he takes his chance in that Back to a mile and two and a half furlongs, I think he'll be bang there with every chance again. He just doesn't stay a mile and a half and back in trip should too. So you're going with Saxon Warrior. Right, Johnny, what about you? Um, a little filly called Enable who's entered at the Curra. Never heard of her. Never heard of her. <laughs> Look, really looking forward to seeing her. Had the pleasure of being at the Ark last year when she ran and it really was a great buzz to see her again as a and this whole stable mate kind of clash with her uh, illustrious Frankel red colleague may, may not turn out to be what we thought it would be but in any event I'm going to go with Glamorous Power trained by Eddie Lynham okay so I got word before this ran first time out at Navin that it could be like one of the fastest horses he's ever had it's by Slade Power I think first season sorry I first think. season sorry yeah um, who has had a few winners uh, he has now he ran up behind Sakura on debut Sakura runs this evening off 80 at Tipperary and I really was surprised at that mark I thought it would be higher yeah. now Glamorous Power rocked up at Down Royal and was only third in what looked a two horse race yeah but was bumped jumped into a road of, of yeah, yeah, lines yeah, yeah. Decent. looked Baby, ridiculously it? green on, on her second start um, but I, I think she's a horse with just raw raw speed who just needs to learn how to race and uh, I think she could be very very good even though she's a twice race maiden but Sakura would kind of probably want to win tonight off 80 to, to yeah. bolster what I'm talking about. The but Eddie Lynham has had a, Eddie, How many winners has Eddie Lynham had this year? Uh, well, that horse in Think the, of it now while you know, I'll get back to you. So that horse in uh, the Lady I want, I want to figure who Sophia. has... Yeah, Sophia. So she's won three she's times. Three? So. That's, that's his only one, would it be? One more. So he's had four winners. Because it's been a quiet year for him mm, so far. Yeah, so yeah. he might tick into... Uh, Sarah, his daughter's had her first winner, but Eddie's had a quiet year. Okay, so you're with Glamorous Approach. Uh, gla glamorous Power. Glamorous Power, not sorry. To be for, not to be, uh, <laughs> not to be confused with the Jim Boulder train Glamorous Okie doke. So we go down across the line again. Those Sa horses to follow. Saxon Warrior. Don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with Low Sun. Yeah. Low Sun. And you're uh, going Glamorous with? Power. Glamorous Power. I'm going with Too Darn Hot. 
Unbelievable. Very good. Nice. Low sun, yeah. too darn hot. Yeah. yeah. There we go. All right, let's <laughs> yeah. move on to the uh, racing action on Saturday. We're probably going to give uh, the, uh, the old Sugar Cup a bit of a, a swear of here. But uh, let's move on to Newmarket. Sweet Solera Stakes Group 3 contest there over seven furlongs. Probably haven't had a, a decent winner in the likes of Soviet Song in quite some time. Uh, but uh, Soviet Song and Attraction, they were the days. They were yeah. the days. Lo love a Philly from back in the day. All right, Shane, how do you bet in this? <laughs> He, he just the seven of them. What are you laughing at? Just loves Phillies from back anything. in the day. Uh, main edition, 11 to 4, 3 to 1. Uh, Azuar, uh, La Pelosa, 134 to 1. Penny Whistle, California Love, 9 to 1. 16 in Pulsion Model, guess 25 to 1. Brian, would you forgive main edition a run last time? <sighs> yeah, look, we know these Mark Johnson horses just thrive on the racing and all that, but she was in a spot about her the last day when she was hampered. I thought she was beat. Um, if you look at Richard Hannon, is a good record in this. I thought Aljar might be worth chancing. Maybe... Doesn't probably show a lot at home, one at 14 to one on debut, but absolutely bolted up, looked like a really smart sort. And I thought it was a bit unlucky the last day in the yeah. race at Sandon. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be looking at Aljar. You're not going to get a, a huge pile of value there at three to one, but I'd be keen to take on main edition. Yeah, would you be taking on main edition? No, I, I'm going to tip her with no real confidence. I, I think, you know, you can forgive her one bad run. I agree with Brian, she was beaten when she was hampered the last day. You know, she's had a break of the guts of three weeks, four weeks now, and uh, very progressive for that. Mark Johnson had a great season, in fairness to him. He's not a trainer that I particularly like following. It's find them quite unpredictable, but, uh, you know, in fairness, she does have the best form, I think, in the race. Uh, the horse that I think is interesting at a price is Impulsion. Um, has been a shade disappointing, but just... This is a trappy enough race. You're talking about a 16-to-1 shot here who um, hasn't been beaten far and basically, you know, could step up a little bit on this ground. Yeah, absolutely. I quite like Penny Whistle for what it's worth. The one over course and distance last time. Absolutely. Form that kind of ties in with uh, La Pelosa as well. Anyway, let's move on to Cork. We've got a couple of pattern races on the card there. We'll uh, look at the Platinum Stakes first. This is kind of an intriguing race. How did it about Yeah, tight enough uh, at the top. Uh, Tom Pinchak, 5 to 2, 11 to 4. Panstar on the go again, 4 to 1, 5 to 1. Making night, we've got 6 to 1 bar. Go on, Brian. Uh, I was just looking at making light just because of the ground. We're probably going to get plenty of rain down in Cork. and. Uh, Look, she's not a, she's she's a fine filly at that level. She's listed slash group three class, and uh, yeah, if the rain came, which it's supposed to do, are we going to get rain? Yeah, well, judging by my um my weather forecast, trusty little weather forecast thing, we're going to get rain. Yeah, so uh, that would obviously bring her into it, and on on the go again, I would obviously want a bit of rain as well, but. Yeah, and that'll obviously have a big impact on the car if we get rain there. So yeah, there will be a little bit of rain in the car. Darn a while with the much. treble last night, flying it. Mm. Yeah. What about you, Johnny? What do you fancy in this? Uh, very tentatively, I'm going to go with Panzer. So solid. So Just solid. Back this horse to place, actually, in Galway. Uh, one of the few winners I had, but she... Great attitude and fairness to her. She just, just never finished out of the first two. She just, just kept at it and looked like she might be swamped and was kind of running on all the way to the line. And uh, typical enough, Jim Boulder, he asked her to tug out again within, what, nine or ten days? Yeah. Um, but she's the type to take it, I think. Good, tough filly. She should be there about six. Very little between a lot of these, really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything else in the Saturday cards for you before we move on to Arlington? I, Sorry, go on. Go on. I, mine is actually worth waiting for, so you can. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think the give thanks stakes is nearly, it's, it's as good as Ray. Is good it not a bit like, they don't know familiar each faces? Other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that Calixana. Uh, she's an improving three year old from Michael Halford, and she won a listed race there for us, Common. What she beat, I don't know, but you know, she gets a bit of weight there for. From the, what, yeah. was it Clear Skies, Bloomfield? Yeah, they're all just, crew. they're knocking around about, She could pr improve past them, I'd, I'd be hopeful of it. Okay, though, getting weighed as well. Yeah. Johnny, anything else for you in the Saturday cards? The 410. The 410. Gunmaker. Form figures of 0 9 0 coming into, um, coming into this, but uh, Ben Cohen takes off the two. I back to Sarson Galway. Such a good rider. A uh, very good rider. Mm -hmm. It had a wide trip. Um, forget about this one. When it was trained in, in Britain, um, it should, have, it should have won on soft ground and has won on the all-weather. Bolted up in the all-weather when we backed Texas Radio and probably napped him on the Friday night lights here. Yes. This thing bolted up in its first start. And, um, you know, I'm always intrigued by any horse that's down to 69. You know, and this horse is down to 69. So very intriguing um, Gets excited, at the prices. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I do think with the form, people are right it off. But I think this horse is very well handicapped. Just needs things to click into place and hopefully get a nice toy into the race tomorrow. Has been horribly drawn on a couple of occasions, but Gavin's horses are in good order as well. Good stuff. Right, well, on to the action in America from Arlington. We'll start at the Secretariat Stakes. Uh, by Irish Raiders particularly. Andrew Bryan's had a pretty good record. Nice one at four times since 2000. Jump Weld obviously sent over Winchester as well. We've got five 
uh, Irish Raiders in this as well. Shane, how did it bet for analyze the Secretariat it. stakes? Yeah, analyze it. Uh, the 7 to 4 favourite as it stands. Hunting Horn 3 to 1, 8 to 1, Platinum Warrior 10 to 1, Banjo at 10 to 1, meaning we go 11 to 1 bar. Go on, Brian. Not much to say, only that Platinum Warrior, there might have been an excuse for his run in the derby. I think he banged his head coming out of the stalls and there was. It was quite messy. I think there was quite a bit of blood coming out of his head. Um, so if you could forgive him that, he might have a chance because he obviously beat Latrobe in the Gala Newell. But apart from that, um, not much to add. Joe Rosario on board as well. What about you, Johnny? I'm, I'm actually with him. and the, you know the, That was a race nothing got into really at the car in the derby. Yeah. The fact it was he a very quite strange race. He banged his head. I never remember Michael Halford having a runner in... in um, North America before. No. Maybe maybe this is his first. I'm not well, 100% sure. Planet Warrior is only his second ever runner in the Derby as yeah. well. And he's not one to, to call his geese swans. To pitch and you know. windmills or whatever. He wouldn't have many um, Galileos. And in fairness, this, this horse is not straightforward. He nope. hung the day he beat um, Latrobe. But uh, no, I, I, give, I give him a reasonable chance. The, the Chad Brown horse should be very hard to beat. He's a little bit tricky, I believe, as well. But um, no, I think he's 12-14 to, to 1, so... Mm. Yeah, it's, it just might be better over this trip as well. You wouldn't know, like, because he was very impressive the day he won over yeah, mile two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, so. I, I, I thought that day um, as well, there, there seemed to be more to come. To be perfectly honest, uh, well, absolutely, really and done. by all accounts, Halford is, is um, very happy with how he settled in and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, on to the Arlington Million, which gets underway at eight minutes past uh, midnight as well. A couple of European representatives here. Uh, Century Dream for Simon Christopher and uh, Delville, as per usual, runs in this as well. How did they bet? Uh, how did they bet? Jay? Yeah, very tight at the top again here. Tom Oscar performs 11 of four favourite, nine to two each of two about Al Manar and Robert Bruce, five to one. Uh, the aforementioned Century Dream, 13 to two spring quality, eight to one bar. Brian? He'll probably finish third again, Deauville, but yeah. uh, geez, he com comes into this off of a crack and run behind yeah. turret rocks and, and the Mel Stakes. I don't know if it's his attitude or what, but uh, look, he just doesn't win very often, but you can expect him to come home with a check anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty big check too. Yeah. O over this trip as well, a mile and two or a mile and two and a half, I think out of eight runs, he's only been out of the first three on one occasion as well. Yeah. So he, he always he, over this quick, trip. quick, barely ten furlongs is his trip. Probably mm. nine and a half furlongs is really his trip. But <laughs> He's, uh, he's something else. Anyway, what about... What I, yeah, I, I, I'm actually tentatively with him. I mean, it wouldn't be a race to get heavily involved in, but um, you can rely on him to run his race. And I'd say Aidan probably has this in mind as his main kind of seasonal target. You would imagine he's so, He's yeah. kind of handicapped by being between a bit of a rock and a hard race in terms of not quite being proper grade one, I suppose, regular winner. Good, good job to have just following him around all the place. I mean, you get to go see some nice parts of the world. I mean, he's never, he's yeah. never in Ireland, is he? Reminds me of um, Tom Hogan, I think, after... Um, after uh, one of his jockeys got injured, um, Eddie Power, um, he basically l allowed him to kind of follow, look after Gordon Lloyd Barnes. So he basically got all over the world, just bringing the horse around like Hong Kong and Australia, Australia and like, you know, sense, yeah. Yeah, France and whatever else. So um, yeah, he's, he's having a fun time though. Yeah, because well, I'm with Almanor for what it's uh, worth there in the Arlington Million. Right, on to Sunday's action. And of course, the first uh, group one for two year olds in Europe is the Finland, uh, the Keeneland Phoenix takes uh, at the Curra. Aidan O'Brien's pretty decent record in this. He's won it 16 times. He's odds on for his 17th. How did it bet? Yeah, it looks a match bet on, uh, on paper. Tom, Sergei Brokov, you have 11 to 10. 11 to 10 advertised will go 14 to 1 bar. Okay, 14's bar. Is there anything beyond the top two, Brian? Uh, no, it's a straight shootout shoot out between the top two, I'd say. And uh, every year there's a horse down in Ballydoyle that the birds and the bees are singing about. The birds and the bees, the birds in the trees are singing about. <laughs> there's a team Jesus. here today. Yeah, yeah. Come on. yeah. Very much I got it going with the yeah, 69. It must be a full moon or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but look, at, he, he ran a crack there in the Coventry. Like he didn't get a, he didn't get the clearest one. He had to be switched a couple of times. I think he would have beaten the, um, the Martin Mead horse, whatever his name is. Uh, advertised. Had, advertised. Yeah. He now he he looked a fair machine over Newmarket. Uh, yeah, I think Sergi, like, if you're getting around even money, like, they, they didn't run him on Derby weekend, um, he's uh, coming here fresh, uh, I think, I think he could be a, a right one, yeah. Last time's a British trained winner of the race? Aidan O'Brien's going for a 17th, isn't yeah, it? So right. it's, it's, 1997. Uh, yeah, you're right. And the horse was? Uh, the horse was Princely Air. Trained, Prince the Air. Yeah, trained oh, yeah. by Mark Johnson, right. ridden by Jason Weaver. The aforementioned. Yep. Yeah. And since then, there have only been four trainers of the winner of the race. So, <laughs> Aiden obviously taking the bulk of those. Anyway, who wins the Phoenix Stakes? Sergei Prokofiev, yeah. I think that the point about this is as well, Aiden has so many supporting cast members of this that without mentioning team tactics, <laughs> there could be team tactics. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's like, only 600, so they can't get too wide. But No, but they can more or less dictate as they wish it 
in, in the sense of how they think it might suit Sergei Prokofiev. I'm not suggesting they're not running on their merits, but at the same time, he's by far the superior horse here, and there's very little between them um, in the Coventry. Like, he was probably just flattening out a bit, but he'd, he'd, he'd made a burst of a run between sort of the furlong and a half pole to the line, yeah. and advertised in pass him out, but I think on merit, Sergei would have probably a little bit um, more kind of, I think, class in him than him. And 11 to 10, in what is a match, in effect, I, 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 think, he, I think he will go off something like four to six. Yeah, you'd imagine so. Yeah. They, look, that, that, that late Ballydoyle money is going to come from you to yeah. as soon as he turns up and he's clean and all well, that. He's, he's a very, very good horse, I think. I really do. I, th I think the Coventry will stand to him as well because he, he probably hadn't been in a battle before that. Aidan O'Brien form. Do you think he's... I know he spoke the other evening about his clouds coming out of that. Or his horses coming out of those clouds more recently. But mm. he also said that they might need the run. Still worry you? It wouldn't really, to be honest. And I, I don't know if his two-year-olds have been quite as maybe badly affected as some of those. He's, mm. he's so many different stables down yeah. there could affect one more than the other. But um, I mean, unless they were bombing earlier on the cards, wouldn't really yeah. bother me. Mm. Um, onto the Phoenix Sprint as well there at Fort Town. I mean, this is just a missed opportunity for British trainers, isn't it? You said that, Jan, the old mm. prep, yeah. It's a group three, though. It is a good tree, but yeah. like it's a sixty grand race, and it looks there. Taking on a very good horse in Spirit of Valor, like yeah, Spirit of Valor. Is you know, if you want to look at the U.S. Navy flag pursuit of going back sprinting, and Aidan wasn't that many good sprinters, this horse shouldn't have a problem at all with this trip. Like, I think no, he just go out in eight. front and make all. I um, mean, he's very good record to Cora. Yeah, absolutely. So Spirit of Valor for you. Uh, what about you, Brian? Um, I actually couldn't come down, and I think if they ran it a couple of different times, they get different results each Gordon time. Gordon Lord Barron runs in it as well. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, well, if there's a big shower of rain. Last. Yeah, uh, I thought now you're talking was a bit unlucky now. She's probably yeah. just running for black type here. I thought she was unlucky the last day at Nace. So, uh, yeah, she's probably just running for black type. I, I couldn't name my, ma my colour sending mass here. OK, well, onto the group one action in France as well. Pre Le Jacques Roy. Uh, Shane, how did they bet for this? Alpha Centauri currently 11 to 10, the favourite, Tom. Uh, five to one with you. Uh, Recoletto, six to one. We've got 13 to two. Accidental agent and eight to one bar. Can you see past, can you see past Terrett here at no. all? It's a good race. I mean, yeah. Romanized runs as well. It's yeah, it'd be nice for up. Ken Condon if, if his two success days also was in it, uh, if they ran well. But Alpha Centauri, like, I know you were saying that they might be getting a bit of rain or something, but that Not storm, much. I think, has passed. And the only time she has disappointed was in heavy ground at the start of the season. But, yeah, with the ground looking like it's going to suit, she's the outstanding three-year-old, isn't she? Without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's not like they don't have options. So if it does go horrific, they're just not going to run, are they? I don't but it won't run in... in Irish Champions weekend, which is disappointing, really, because there are two Brand races conditions. you could... What's that? Maybe, considering the ground that might be around at that time yeah. of year. <laughs> like, she could go Matron or Champion 6. I yeah. think it would be a big draw, because yeah. she's a wonder filly and not trained mm -hmm. by Aidan O'Brien as well. And I think that does matter to people, that somebody else trains her. And uh, there was a photo of her there with some hander of <laughs> some description yeah. this week. Oh, Honestly, yeah. could, like, there was like a Grand National hero Gosh. of, like, whenever. Yeah, yeah, she's she's like a stand absolutely absolutely huge. Do you think she's like, been thing, yeah. too conservatively campaigned? I wouldn't say that, no. Well, I mean, like, a Sussex was probably there for the taking, was it? Yeah, but she's taking on the boys here now, in fairness. So, yeah. um, I don't think... I don't think Jessie was shy from, you know, she's, it's not going to cost her much if she's beaten early by a very good, like, older horse. Like. Yeah. But uh, as long as the ground is good or better, like, I, I can't see anything beating her and definitely comes into the, one of the bets of the weekend territory. Like. It's particularly at 11 to 10. Ken Condon otherwise will be totally hoping for rain for Roman eyes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right, let's move on to our best bets of the weekend. Then, of course, Labrook's best odds guaranteed and has multiples from 12 to 2 every day. Right, Shane, come on, we'll start with your best bet of the weekend and give us a multiple so as well. going to go with one on Sunday, first of all, Tom. And now you're talking to Brian, mentioned there briefly in the Phoenix Sprint. Going to look across to America and then the Arlington Million. I think Deauville at 8 to 1 has another great chance of going two places better than it did uh, this time last year. And finally, uh, California Love at 9 to 1 in the Sweet Solera on Saturday. Cool. At Newmarket. I want. I want. Set out of Compton and and everything. Yeah, go on. <laughs> uh, this fulminate, I think, could be quite good for Jerry Lines and uh, Colin Keane in the three o'clock race. She got Colin Keane out of um, uh, yeah, out of fair, trouble yeah. at Fairy yeah. House. Yeah. Now, how she came up that gap, she's very brave. She'll probably win that that three o'clock race, the seven furlong fillies race. Uh, Band of Outlaws. I think he was he was quite good at the Curry. Won a Premier handicap over a mile for Joseph O'Brien. Then he went on to the mile at Galway and he had a bad draw. I think he was in fourteen. Um, Things just didn't go right for him. Interesting that they're pulling him out quickly. So that's the 5.15. And um, yeah, they're, they're the other two on the Sunday card for me. Okie doke. Best bet of the weekend, Johnny? Uh, I'll go with Gunmaker in the 4.10. And uh, the treble then we'll put in uh, Alpha, Alpha Centauri. Nah. On the handicap? 
Uh, no. I haven't no. checked what it is yet, but... I had a bit of hope, but I, I don't know. Very bad prep going in after that Monaghan defeat. And um, again, though, there was nothing really to play for, considering... There was everything true. to play for. Avoid they Dublin. <laughs> Avoid but Dublin. you have to play them eventually, anyway. What if they played Kerry and lost to Kerry? Did they, uh. <laughs> like, I don't know why they took the game a little bit lightly. Like, well, it, would, it would have been great to be playing they, they Tyrone. They did look now as if they didn't care less about mm. what was going on on the field. Like, Monaghan had everything to play for, and Galway just didn't show up. Anyway, yeah. Um, okay. No, I was anyway lost with the confidence. Um, what was I talking about? Before 10. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so gun, gun maker, gun maker into Alcentauri and Sergei Prokofiev. Sergei Prokofiev. Roughly sort of 3 to 1 double into whatever. Um, gun Good maker. Good on it, say. Good, Good stuff. Uh, uh, my best bet of the weekend is formulating at 3 o'clock from the current at Cork, Zagitova in their opening race, the 115, and uh, Alpha Centauri at Delville as well in the Prix de Jacques Mois. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week for more.